G'day, and welcome to AOS Coach. In this video, I'm gonna look at battle tactics in third edition Age of Sigmar, specifically the ones in the General's Handbook Battle Pack. I'm gonna look at what the battle tactics are all about, highlight some of those ideas that you might wanna think about when choosing them, and possibly the timing as well, because equally, it's not about the battle tactic you choose, but also when in the battle you choose it. So you're going to want to get across battle tactics pretty quickly, because in my opinion, it'll be the most influential reason that you will win or lose. Obviously, dice rolls and tactics and scoring objectives, put that to the side. Outside of that, battle tactics is incredibly important. So what exactly is a battle tactic? A battle tactic is a goal that you will want to achieve in the turn. At the start of each of your hero phases, you will have the choice of picking a battle tactic from a list. Each battle pack has a set to choose from, and a player with an eagle eye is going to notice that the battle tactics are different between the core rulebooks and the General's Handbook 2021. And in the future, there might be other battle packs and they will be different than the core and the General's Handbook. So in this video, we're going to look at the General's Handbook 2021 because it'll mo most likely be the most common battle tactics you will use in this season. When you choose a battle tactic for the round, you will have the turn to complete it. So if you don't complete it in your turn, you fail to score the battle tactic and you also can't use it again, which is part of the reason why I said the timing is also going to be important. So it's really a once per game uh, battle tactic and then the next turn you will get a different battle tactic to choose from. So your list is going to shrink as you go. But let's actually look a little bit more into what battle tactics are about and then deep dive into the specific ones. So when we look at the General's Handbook 2021, there are eight battle tactics to choose from in this battle pack. They are going to represent, I guess, goals that you want to achieve in the battlefield. And the eight are Broken Ranks, Conquer, Slay the Warlord, Ferocious Advance, Savage Spearhead, Aggressive Expansion, Monstrous Takeover, and Bring It Down. Each of these battle tactics have a specific criteria to achieve them, and it's going to vary. It's going to vary between... Um, destroying a specific unit, whether it's a hero or a battle line choice. It might be about holding an objective. It could be about something completely else. There's some that are based around movement. There are a whole, whole range of different things. So it's really going to be adaptable to the opponent that you're playing, the battle plan that you're on, and just how the game's going. And one of the exciting, but also one of the confusing parts to this is there's no specific order that you choose them in. So you might have a really great battle plan and you might have an idea of how you're going to take down your opponent, but being fixated on one particular battle tactic might not be the right strategy. So it's going to be important for you to understand what the eight are and choose them at the right moment. One of the reasons I mentioned that this is a really decisive part of the battle is it's actually worth victory points. When you look at your General's Handbook, you will notice that you will score two victory points each time you score the battle tactics. In addition to all of that, some tournaments may notice, and when it comes down to tiebreakers, or there might be other ways that battle tactics are going to play a part. So it could be the difference between a major win or a, a minor win or a major win and a loss because it also can be if you're both on you and your opponent are both on the same victory points if you have scored more battle tactics than your opponent it actually might be one of the first layers of a tiebreaker so one it's going to score you victory points two it actually will be a uh, a decider when it comes to should you both at the end of the game be tied on victory points so another reason why this is important to be considering how many you score and thinking about your list and thinking about how can i build a list that has the ability to score battle tactics but also has more options available to me so i'm going to share with you again some considerations for each of these battle tactics with Broken Ranks, you will get to pick one battle line unit that your opponent has in their starting army. So not summoned units, we're talking about battle line that are on the table in the list. Things like reserves still count as well, but it's what's in the starting army. And you get to complete this battle tactic if you destroy that unit that you select. In addition, if you destroy it with a monster, a friendly monster of yours, both either in combat, uh, shooting, or an ability, 
you will score an extra victory point. So you'll go from having two to three additional victory points if a monster is the one who destroys it some by some form of attack or ability. So uh, let's look at some of those key points, I guess, when I think about broken ranks. Before choosing this battle tactic, I sit down and I think about what are the battle line options available to me and can I destroy it this turn? You know, I, I could use magic, I could use shooting, I could use combat, I could use a combination of these, these tactics, but I need to be able to destroy the battle line. So if I am gonna choose it, I'm probably gonna choose it later in the in the game. So probably minimum battle round two, I probably wouldn't be choosing it in battle round one unless there was a really unique situation in my hands. The longer I leave it, I guess, the easier it's going to be because there's just gonna be general attrition and units are gonna die and things are gonna things are gonna die over time. So I'll be able to do some chip damage, I'll be doing, you know, arcane bolts, do some spells, do a little bit of shooting. So it gets easier to to do over time. It's worth choosing units that you already need to kill anyway. They might be critical to your opponent's um, strategy, they're gonna be putting down a whole bunch of command abilities or synergies. You might be looking at one that's holding an objective. If you want to attack something with a high amount of damage or a high amount of wounds, you really need to think about, you know, putting a concentration of your force into that unit. Otherwise, especially with high armor saves or high amounts of wounds, and then the command ability rally, you might notice that if you just try to chip away at these big units over time, it can be a little bit mission impossible. So for me, you know, the, the easy win and the cheap win here is going for those low wounds or low armor saves or a combination of both. You know, those units that are cheap in their points, they aren't, they're just there to kind of hold the objectives for a short amount of time to maybe block you off from getting into the juicy stuff. You know, units like Free Guild Guard, um, Gore, Squigs, you know, these are all good examples where there's a low armor save, um, a low wound count, a low bravery account. Um, as I mentioned, you know, things like redeploy, if I just chip away at them over time, um, they can still come back. So just keep that in mind. But, and, you know, they might want to, they might use things like uh, redeploy to get away from combat. So if you don't have a lot of shooting and, and magic and you're relying on combat, you might notice that they might use a redeploy to uh, re move away the D6 uh, inches from you. And that will then, um, it might, might be the difference between you hitting a charge or not hitting a charge. So really do keep in mind, you know, what are the tools that you have to take down the unit. Plus, if you finish off the unit with a monster, you're going to get that additional one victory point as well. So if you can get the three, and even if you cast the spell Metamorphosis and turn one of your wizards into a monster, uh, which is the realm spell from Gur, you will get a cheeky additional one victory point should the monster be the one that destroys that unit. With Conquer, you get to pick one objective marker on the battlefield that your opponent controls. And you get to complete this battle tactic if you control that objective marker at the end of the turn. Sounds pretty easy. So you want to secure an objective from your opponent. That's clearly what you're trying to do. If it's being held by a unit that is a cheap unit of bodies, again, low model count, low wound count, um, low armor save, you know, those types of things. They're not, not, a, not a lot of bodies, or maybe they've just tagged the objective with one model in the, in the circumference of the objective scoring. Especially in the earlier game, that's going to be a good win for you. If you have, if your opponent has a large unit control in the objective, that's probably going to be a, a quite a hard one. So you might want to hold off this battle tactic until later in the game. So if I've got a, a mega gargant sitting on top of that objective, if I've got a unit of 60 grots or, um, you know, 40, well, not 40, but 20 Phoenix guard or something that's super durable or lots of wounds or hard to take down, picking this in battle round two or battle round three, depending on who you're, who, which army you're playing, could, could be a little bit mission impossible. So just keep in mind and just think about how easy for is it would it be to take this objective off you, your opponent. Depending on how many objectives are on the battle plan will really vary. And if there is a low amount of objectives on the table, it will mean this is a little bit harder to score because opponents can put more models of theirs onto an objective which makes it harder to score so you might want to hold off this battle tactic until towards the end of the game however if there is a lot of objectives is uh 
four or more, you know, going into six, depending on the battle plans that you're playing in, that might make it a whole lot easier because your opponent has to spread out their force across multiple objectives. And you could concentrate your army into one particular objective and hopefully seize it off your opponent. It might be worth considering if you have a unit that is in reserve, whether it's a teleport, a summon, um, as I mentioned, a reserve unit, even being able to redeploy onto the objective if they're you know as you go later in the game and the the battle starts to be swung or moved into a particular point in the battle you might find that people have what they call tag and go so they claim the objective early in the game and then they walk off it and go use that unit in a, in a combat somewhere else if an opponent has left an objective open, you know, a unit like the Canary or a Shadow Warriors or uh, Gore coming onto the table or a teleport, there's a whole bunch of different spells that allow you to teleport. You know, Hand of Gork was one of the examples, but there are other many teleporting abilities. You know, you might be able to seize control of an objective by teleporting. Often they have a rule that says that you've got to be outside of nine inches. Stormcast, for example, come from reserve for half of their force anyway. So either way, whatever it might be, if you have the ability to come in from reserve or a teleport, this is an easy way to, to hopefully score, score conquer from an exposed objective. Finally, with Conquer, I would say that, you know, consider that in General's Handbook 2021, there is the rule to be able to remove an objective in turn three, not a primary objective, but just uh, any other regular objective. So it means if you wait towards the later game and you are using that rule, it may mean there'll be one less objective to claim. So keep that in mind, the game might become a little bit harder towards the end of the game, depending on how the battle is going. And if you obviously are winning the battle and you are killing your opponent, then obviously it's gonna be easier for you to claim but if the game isn't going your way and then one less objective is on the table, conquer starts to become really difficult. To score slay the warlord, you will need to kill your opponent's general in this turn. And if you're able to do it with a friendly monster or an ability from a friendly monster, you will get it a bonus victory point. So it, this really depends on who is your opponent's general. Is it Nagash, Archeon, uh, Catacross, you know, some type of really powerful general? Do you have the ability to pull it down this turn? You know, remembering that the heroic action might allow them to heal. Imagining, you know, especially if there are other abilities to regenerate, this can be a really tough time. Don't just assume that all of these big heroes are the general, because some of them act as if they're the general. So Marathi Kane, for example, is a unit on its war scroll that says that it's treated as a general in addition to the actual general choice. So in this example, that might sound confusing to you, but in this example, right, if I'm a Daughters of Cain player, I can choose the, the Iron Scale Medusa as the general, and that unlocks Snakes as Battle Line. So Marathi is treated as the general, which means that command abilities are being issued at a further range, despite Marathi not being the general, the Iron Scale Medusa is. But if I go and kill Marathi, I'm not going to score this because the general in my list is the Iron Scale Medusa. So for, for clarity, talk to your opponent, make sure you're clear on who is the actual chosen general before you choose it, and then see how confident am I killing it. Is it just a five wound hero, or is it some superpower? And if you've got all the abilities to do it, awesome. If not, you might want to hold this a little bit later. You may need to throw all of your eggs into killing this general through magic, shooting, combat, any tool that you've got up your disposal. If you want to win this battle tactic and you are up against, a, again, a Nagash, an Archeon, some type of Catacross, especially, you know, Catacross has got, you know, 20 wounds. It can be quite hard to pull down Catacross. So really keep that in mind. Your opponent will may try to protect the this general. They're going to try to heal it up with a heroic action. They might have additional heroing, uh, healing up your sleeve. And, you know, they're going to want to try to deny you. One, they obviously want to keep their general alive. But two, they want to stop you from scoring it. So just really be careful on when you choose Slay the Warlord because it sound, sounds easier than it is. But, you know, it's saying that there are low wound heroes, so they, they die pretty quickly. So this obviously is easier to kill when there's a, you know, a free guild general. Uh, you know, and I, I played an Iron Scale Medusa the other, the other day and I killed it within a combat. So, you know, look for things like, 
uh, a unit without a ward save, look for things that have a low armor save, look for a general that is exposed that's not kind of sitting and being protected by a unit, unit of battle line. And after all, if you kill it with a monster, then you're going to get that extra victory point as well. So if you're able to use a, a breath weapon or some type of combat into it, whether it's a hero monster or just a regular monster, so long as it's got the monster keyword, um, you will get that extra victory point. You score Ferocious Advance by picking three units from your starting army. So they're on the battlefield and they're in your starting army. And if you run all three of them and finish within three inches of each other, you score this. And if they're monsters, all three of them are monsters, not just one or three, then you score one additional victory point. Now, this one's a super easy one and it's really good, especially in turn one or maybe turn five, but you know, think about the, the game. If your opponent gives you first or you get to go first, when there's not a lot of things in range for shooting and combat, this is a really easy one because you can make a run roll. And as long as those three units are going to be within three inches of each other, not ho not wholly within, just as long as they're within, within, you're going to score this. It's a really easy one. It does require you to make a run roll. So do keep that in mind if you have a shooting unit or a unit that would likely want to charge. Often and most of the time you can't run and charge or run and shoot. Some units have the ability to run and shoot or run and charge. So keep it in mind, if you do make the run roll, you're likely not doing a shoot, a shoot or a, um, a charge. Obviously, to have three monsters run within three inches of each other, well, one, how many armies have three monsters in them to begin with? Obviously, Sons of Behemoth, uh, your Ogre Moor tribes, there are some units that are going to have a bunch of, uh, you know, Flesh Eater Courts if they go Grizzle Gore. You know, there's some armies that will have three monsters. Would I choose three monsters just to score this battle tactic probably not remember i do have metamorphosis so i can turn one of those those units into a monster however by keeping my three monsters or units within three inches of each other it does mean i'm concentrating my force as opposed to spreading it out and going for the battle plan so you know really just think about those three options and make sure you don't overextend yourself as well especially with some of those units that have a really high movement. If you have a really high movement and you get a really high run roll and you overextend yourself, you know, let's say hypothetically, I have a unit of, uh, I don't know, like, let's say one of those units was a monster and it has a movement of 14. And I, I make a run roll, I've got 14 plus my D6. It moves up to 20 inches. If I take that full 20 inches and then I try to use battle line unit, you know, just generic five or six inch move, if I move that that monster first and I move it up to 20 and then I try to move my troops next, I'm not going to end within three inches. So really just be conservative with your moves, especially, or maybe move your uh, slower units first before you make the run roll for the, the faster unit to make sure that you keep within three inches. Next up, you've got Bring It Down. So to score Bring It Down, you're going to pick one enemy monster on the battlefield and you're going to score those two sweet victory points if you destroy that monster this turn. Now, there's an additional victory point available if you kill that monster with one of your monsters. So if you've got a, a an attack or an ability from a friendly monster and you can pull down the opponent's monster, then happy days, you score yourself three victory points not two. But be mindful that monsters can be leaders as well. So if you target a monster leader, let's say a vampire lord on zombie dragon is a perfect example, or a ghoul king on terror geist. So there's a lot of them, a lot of hero monsters. They do have the heroic action to heal, and they could heal up to D3 wounds, making it a little bit harder. Some of them have ward saves. Some of them have really good armor saves. So they are harder to kill than a generic monster. When you choose this enemy monster on the battlefield, it doesn't have to be on full wound. So you could target a, you know, a monster that has already been taken damage over time. So not a lot of monsters do heal naturally. Things like the War Hydra, for example, does have an ability to heal itself D3 each turn, but most monsters won't be healing outside of some type of magic or if it's a hero monster. So you might want to pick this later in the game when the monster is in the thick of combat, uh, it's in range for shooting and magic and all that good stuff, and you can bring it down this particular turn. 
if you are going to chip away at a monster and thinking about you know trying to bring it down in combat especially with a uh, a, you know one of your own monsters also be mindful of of monsters being able to redeploy although that's just that is a generic command ability um if you are going to try down and bring the monster down in combat especially with your monster charging in to go for that monster you may see them redeploy and make your life a little bit harder on the charge and you might fail it all together. So um, if you are going to go in with combat, really, really have some tools up your sleeve, especially have someone in range to be able to help them re-roll that charge, or if they've got a bonus to their charge, that'll be awesome. But for most cases, you know, if you've got the ability to, sh- to bring it down in shooting or magic, that'll just almost guarantee you the um, the battle tactic, but have some resources up your sleeve if you try to get into combat. Aggressive expansion, you get to score when you pick two objective markers on the battlefield that are not wholly within your territory. So not the objectives that are starting in your deployment zone because they are they are wholly within your territory. Um, but ones that are on, on the line, I don't believe count. So if they're on the line, you're all good. Um, might want to check the FAQ on that one. But either way, just got to make sure you pick two objective markers that are not wholly within your territory. And you complete the battle tactic if you um, control both of them by the end of the turn. So it's pretty straightforward. You pick two objectives that aren't wholly within your territory and you score uh, victory points if you control them. So you'll get not only the victory points for claiming objectives, you'll also get your battle tactics. So you probably will want to pick this one early. Um, You pick this one early, especially if the objectives are unclaimed, um, because it doesn't doesn't mean that you need to seize control off your opponent. It just means you need to claim them. So it's probably an easy one. Or towards the late end of the game, if you are winning winning combats and you're about to seize control off your opponent, you might want to score it for a big all-out attack. Some battle plans will make this battle tactic near impossible to score because of the number of objectives or where they're positioned. If there are too many objectives in your opponent's territory, it will make your life a whole lot harder, especially if you don't have a lot of high movement or high um, like teleports and summons and things like that. But and we talked about as well the um, the ability is it the two tonic um, shift which removes an objective in in battle round three, so you know think about which ones are available. For me, aggressive expansion is definitely one I try to use earlier, maybe turn one, turn two, but um, not to say you can't use it at any time. But for me, it's just about when am I about to score two objectives, and early game is usually when I want to start claiming this one. When you reveal this battle tactic, you're going to pick one monster from your starting army on the battlefield and you complete this battle tactic if that monster is contesting an objective that you control at the end of this turn and there are no enemy monsters going for that objective. So if you already have the objective in your control and then the monster goes in and just sits within that radius, usually it's six inches, but if it's in that radius of objective scoring, you're going to score this victory point. Don't drag in a monster and try to get it into combat while you're contesting this objective because that the secondary condition of not having a monster contest, an enemy monster contesting, will mean that you'll lose it. So just keep it in mind, especially if you're thinking about a Titanic duel and you want to have monster on monster action, just keep that in mind. Try to have more bodies than just monsters. Your monster will count as five against the objective, which is great. Uh, It can certainly do some solid damage normally, so don't send in a monster solely to try to claim an objective, depending on, again, who the opponent unit is. A cheap battle line, again, free guild guard, might be an easy one for your monster to pull down, but, you know, just think about your capability of that monster. The only other thing I'll call out is... um, just watch out you don't pull out pull an enemy monster into combat because you could you could um accidentally pile in and pull a, an enemy monster into combat and then that then that means that they can pile in themselves and move into the sc- objective scoring zone alternatively um when you go for the charge they might try to redeploy and i've done this in the past where i redeploy that monster and move it from um, not in range of an objective to being in range of the objective. So just watch out for the re- the sneaky redeploy because you actually might drag in an enemy monster on the objective. So finally, you got Savage Spearhead. So you complete this battle tactic if there are two or more units from your starting army wholly within your opponent's territory at the end of the turn. 
if they are two or more monsters, they are going to give you an additional victory point. So it's going to be fantastic for fast armies that have that early movement. Just run up the board, charge up the board, uh, get into your opponent's territory, boom, two points. If they're monsters, and monsters normally have high movements anyway, 16s, 14 inches, 12 inches, then make a run roll, you are definitely going to be in your opponent's territory, although watch out for the, the running and charging because you may not be able to do that. So if you're going for the early victory points, this is a really good one. Be mindful that it is wholly within. So if you've got a monster and they have a really large base, you're going to really want to compensate to make sure that you are wholly within your territory, not half within, because if you're only half within, that won't be wholly within. So just be mindful of your base. You don't want to you don't want to lose this battle tactic for you know an inch or two that you could have maybe run or you over you know you didn't extend yourself to the maximum. I will say that just keep in mind that if you rush up the board early to score this one, and it's a good early game one to um, this particular one, is that you are going to be in range for your opponent to charge you. It's going to make life easier for them to charge you. If you're going to be in range for spare spells and prayers and shooting and you know, if you charge them from a from a big run, they they might unleash hell and start chipping away at your monsters. But either way, if you get into their objective zone, so if you get into their opponent's territory, and you get two of those, then you will score um, those two victory points. Having eight battle tactic options really gives you the tools to appropriately respond to the battlefield conditions. But at the same time, I can appreciate having eight options in a turn can be quite confusing. So. The way I like to look at this is when I'm building my lists, I consider what my army strengths are and I think about which are the ones that are easier for me to achieve and which ones aren't easy for me to achieve. And I think there's a real fine balance when you're choosing each battle tactic. If you if you choose the early the easy ones early, then it means that towards the late in the game when there's only hard ones available to you, then you might find that you stop scoring your battle tactics from turn three, four, and five because you've chosen the easy ones and the hard ones are just too hard. At the same time, when there's an opportunity to score the, the battle tactic, you need to seize the opportunity because you may lose that chance again. So I realized that there's a lot of gray here. And before you choose the battle tactic, for me, I really think about the conditions. I think about what is in my opponent's army? What is the battle plan? Um, how is the flow of the game going? Um, am I winning? Am I losing? Is there objectives about to be scored? How much damage has my monster taken? You know, do I am I confident in this particular turn I could destroy this unit, this general? Um, you know, what's the tools that I have available to me? And when I think about my battle tactics, and this is this is not the golden list, folks. I've just brought up here some of the, the ways that I look at my battle tactics and where I might choose them. So in turn one, for example, for the armies that I'm running, things like Ferocious Advance, expan Aggressive Expansion, and Monstrous Takeover might be one of the three stronger options for my army. Now, that's not to say that Broken Ranks I won't choose in turn one, but what I'm saying is that uh, in the average situation, I know that my army is easier to score these two or three in the early game, the mid game, and the late game. But as I mentioned, every scenario I'll assess over time. But, you know, remember that a few of them are going to offer bonus victory points and some of them are going to be easier than others. My son's army is going to be easy to score with three monsters and gaining those bonus victory points. But my daughters of Cain army only really has one monster. So should I go find one or two additional monsters for my daughters? Probably not. There's not a real, a lot of really good options. And certainly if I was to bring them in from say Cities of Sigma, they are big um, point sinks that I won't be able to invest into my, my other unit. So, you know, look at my options and each of my responses, Cities, Daughters, Gits, all of the armies that I play, I would look at them very differently. Don't forget I've got wizards that have metamorphosis that can turn my wizard into a monster and that can help me score additional victory points. So, you know, as always, I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your rationale on battle tactics. How do you choose them? Which ones do you like? Which ones do you find really hard to score? What are the armies that you're running? And, you know, let me know some of the decisions and the rationales on why you choose what you choose. I'd be curious to hear from you always so we learn together. But let me know in the comment section what battle tactics you build around, what you like, why. 
Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so link is down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.